time. Ooh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> well, at least we have sound today. We do not have picture because we've got some issues with our, our batteries. So we're going to go old school today. So those red things in the pews, those are called hymnals. So we're going to use those, and we'll just follow along. You pretty much know the service anyway, but it'll be fine. But we're glad that you're here with us today on this beautiful day that God has given us. We saw two rainbows yesterday uh, in Adrian, so that was pretty awesome, pretty awesome. Um, just a few announcements to note today. Uh, the altar flowers are given by Larry and Barb for their 60th anniversary. <laughs> woo And because it's their anniversary, they're providing coffee hour today. It'll be in the big room after church, so come and join them and, and celebrate some more with their 60th. Uh, this is the last Sunday to donate towards the bishop's request that we have a special offering for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jerusalem and the Holy Land. So there's a, a basket at the back if you would like to do so for that. Also coming up on August 24th, we're having a Mud Hens outing as a congregation, and that will be uh, $14 per ticket. Give it to Vicki Kirsch by the first Sunday in August. So you've got a little bit of time, but let's have a good outing for that. Our Tanzania project, our next service project is July 16th from 10 to 4. And Deb Kogelman is going to come forward and talk about our centennial events that are happening. Good morning. The Bicentennial is coming. The Bicentennial is coming. If any of you get the Herald, that's all you read about this week. Um, is very exciting. Um, but it is July 18th, Thursday evening through Sunday the 21st, and Gloria Day is hosting the Native American Treaties Display, and Thomas Nets, who is a Native American uh, reenactor and educator about the woodland uh, Indians of this region. And so he'll be giving, um, the display itself is uh, self-guided, but he will be here with some artifacts and he'll be doing impromptu talks uh, during the course of the day. And we'll also have a display of the history of the uh, of the school that our church is now built around. So if anybody has any background or history, since I am new to Tecumseh, that could fill me in on some of that, I have some things that I've pulled from the archives in the museum, but I would love to hear even more uh, details that we could put on the display as well uh, for people to take a look at. Um, we're also going to have a free will bake sale uh, that is a free will donation bake sale um, to raise money for the social outreach programs like the Quilters and the Tanzanian Project. Uh, so if you'd like to join in on that fun, there are sign-up sheets in the back uh, on the wall. And if you have any questions, you can certainly ask me. We really appreciate any and all help that we can get. Uh, we also want to say a special thank you to Ron and Sarah Friesen because uh, Ron has agreed to drive his Model T Ford uh, in the parade with Gloria Day information on the side. So uh, we're going to look forward to that as well. So it's going to be a historic week weekend and lots of fun, so join in. Thanks. There will also be a worship service that weekend. It'll be at Riverbend Friends. It's going to happen at 11 o'clock, so we'll have our regular service here at 930, and then if you want to do some more church, it'll be up there at Riverbend Friends with some of the area churches involved in that. Let us enter into worship as we hear our prelude.
Let us rise for the confession. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life and the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, you are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. We sing our opening hymn, number 712, verses 1 to 4. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, we implore you to hear the prayers of your people. Be our strong defense against all harm and danger, that we may live and grow in faith and hope through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I guess you may be seated. Good morning again. Our first reading is Lamentations, chapter 3, verses 22 through 33. Um, the book of Lamentations is one of the most important sources of information about the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians in 587 BCE. 
Though the people admit that uh, God's judgment was just, today's reading declares a fervent trust that God will not leave them forever. The reading. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for one to bear the yoke in youth, to sit alone in silence when the Lord has imposed it. But uh, to put one's mouth to the dust, there may yet be hope. To give one's cheek to the smiter and be filled with insults. For the Lord will not reject forever. Although the, his causes, uh, he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he, is, uh, he does not willingly afflict or grieve anyone. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Um, the psalm will be read responsively, Psalm 30. I will exalt you, Lord, because you have lifted me up and I have not let my enemies triumph over me. Our Lord, my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You, bought, you brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing praise to the Lord, all the faithful. Give thanks to the holy remembrance. God's wrath is short. God's favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping spends the night, uh, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down into, uh, to the pit? Will the dust praise you and uh, declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me, O Lord. Be my helper. You have turned my waiting into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore, my heart rings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. The second re reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, 7 through 15 where Paul encourages the Corinthians to honor their commitment to participate in the collection his churches are organizing for the Christians in Jerusalem. He presents Jesus as an example of selfless stewardship and reminds uh, them that Christians have received abundantly so that they can share abundantly. Now you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in the utmost eagerness, and in our love for you. So we uh, want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. I do not say this as a command, but I am testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of others, for, uh, uh, for you know the generous act of the Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty you might become rich. And in this matter, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you to begin the last, uh, be, uh, appropriate for you who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may ma be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what uh, one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean <clears throat> that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of fair balance between you, between your presence and a present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have uh, too much, and the one who had too little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so that she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, for she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately where that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you? How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Congregation may be seated. Can I have the children come forward at this time? You guys can sit there. That's the only ones that are willing to come up? Okay. <laughs> Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Good. You guys all packed up? They're leaving for Pittsburgh and Savannah today. So, um, it's been a long stay with Grandma and Grandpa, hasn't it? Has that been fun? Okay, good. So I'm going to talk about when you guys are sick. When you're sick, um, do you have a fever sometimes? Is that fun? No. You <laughs> said yes. <laughs> Because you get a lot of attention, ice cream, stuff like that, maybe. So h- how does your mom and dad figure out that you have a fever? They touch your head. They touch your head, just like that. Because if you're really hot, then they go get a thermometer and they try, you know, to get an accurate reading of what your fever actually is. So they touch you. The story I just read about Jesus, he healed someone... And she touched Jesus. She knew if she could just touch him, that she would be made well. And she was. That's pretty powerful, isn't it? So even when you're sick, and before mom and dad give you the medicine, sometimes that touch really helps, doesn't it? Because you know that mom and dad are watching over you, and they're getting ready to help you. They're getting ready to get you some medicine or take you to the doctor, all those kinds of things. Just like Jesus touches us. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have touched us and you continue to touch us with your healing power. We thank you that you call us to touch others with that same love, the love that we have received from you. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up. Have a good day. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the living Christ. 
So two wonderful stories for today, one sandwiched in the middle of the other. First, we hear about a little girl, Jairus' daughter. The word had spread that this wandering rabbi from Nazareth, rumored to have healing powers, had come to town. And Jairus was one of the high muckety-mucks in the local synagogue and the father of a very sick child. And ordinarily, we would not expect Jairus to have anything to do with Jesus. After all, leaders of other synagogues were a little down on this leader. But biology trumps theology every time. And Jairus wants his little girl healed. And she would always be his little girl, no matter how old she was. Any father knows that. And this is why this gospel records him as falling at the feet of Jesus. This leader of the synagogue, this dignified man, falls at the feet of Jesus. And instead of a calm request, he's probably grabbing Jesus around the ankles over and over. He is screaming, half crying, half asking, Jesus, my little daughter is the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her so she may be well and live. Jesus, my little daughter is the point of death. Jesus, my little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may live. And we have no record of Jesus' response, just that Jairus' begging must have worked because we read that Jesus immediately goes with him. And meanwhile, we're introduced to this nameless woman, a nobody, not nearly as important as Jairus, and for all 12 years of Jairus' daughter's life, this poor lady has had no life. For you see, these hemorrhages were not merely inconvenient in a society that placed immense value on ritual purity. They disqualified her from being in the synagogue. She could have no contact with anyone else in the community of faith. But this was some spunky lady. She had survived this misery for a dozen years without giving in. There's no mention of a husband here. In a time when marriage could be ended as for something as silly as burning the breakfast bagels, he probably left her a long time ago. And no doubt she'd tried all the ritual cures. In the Jewish Talmud, which is the primary source for all religious law and theology for Jews, it gives no fewer than 11 cures for hemorrhages. And some of them are tonics and astringents, but some are just sheer superstition, like carrying the ashes of an ostrich egg and a linen pouch in summer and a cotton one in the winter, or carrying a barley corn that has been found in the dung of a white female donkey. No luck, though. And the doctors had been of no help. All they had cured her of was her bank balance. And now she was broke. And all she could do was pay attention. But she had paid attention when the word came about this Jesus. And how did she get so close to him? After all, in a small town, her secret would have been known. No one would have wanted her to get close to a holy man, to a rabbi. But this is one of those rare times where the crowds waiting to see Jesus kind of worked in her favor. Her face would have been veiled, as would have been the face of any respectable lady on the street. So off she went. And what would she do? when she got close to the rabbi? Would she slowly make her way near him and then with a flourish whip off her veil while the townsfolk would stand by horrified and announce that she wanted to be healed? Nope. Too bold, she thought. She settled on a plan. If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Just read out and touch. No big deal, just touch. And then steal away into the crowd. And as she made her way to that fateful meeting, she kept repeating to herself, if I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. 
And I wonder where she learned that, the healing power of a touch. And we know what happens next. Her gutsiness is rewarded. As we read, immediately, immediately, her hemorrhage stopped. And she felt in her body that she was healed. Wait a minute. Who touched my clothes? Uh Uh-oh. If this lady had taken a great leap of faith now, she probably wanted to find a great leap of escape. She could have just stood silent. Even the disciples had given her an out. Good night, Jesus. We're surrounded by people. Who touched you? Are you serious? Don't breathe, she must have thought. Just keep quiet. That would certainly be better than going and admitting in front of God and everybody that she had just made this rabbi as unclean as she was with her selfish touch. And what was the penalty for deliberately making another person unclean? Stoning by death. It only took a moment for her to make up her mind. With fear and trembling, she came forward, the veil slowly falling from her face. The neighbors in the crowd must have gasped as they recognized her, coming to confess. And haltingly, she began to explain. Twelve years, rituals, doctors, lost all my money, last resort, if I but touch... And Jesus stopped her with a word. Daughter. By the way, this is the only place in all four Gospels where we find this word. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Or as a more contemporary version reads, go in peace and take care of yourself. Wow. Meanwhile, the business at hand interrupts Jairus' daughter. Don't bother Jesus anymore, they say. It's too late. She's gone. She's dead. His friends, friends, mumble. Probably almost adding, if you wouldn't have been bothering with that woman. And I wonder what went through Jairus' mind. He had heard the woman. He had heard her utter confidence in Jesus. If I but touch... And Jairus was convinced, thus, to request that of Jesus to lay hands on his daughter so she might be made well. Just touch her, but not now. According to Mosaic law, three things could make anyone ritually unclean and excluded from the community. Leprosy, uncleanliness caused by a discharge or hemorrhage, and touching a corpse. So the rabbi wasn't supposed to do this. But before Jairus could sort this all out in his mind, and certainly before anyone realized that at least one of those taboos had been broken, Jesus says to him, do not fear, but believe. So by the time the group gets to the house, the weeping and the wailing had commenced, all the traditional mourners had been hired, the lunch had probably been set up, And Jesus says they jumped the gun. Why do you make a commotion? Why do you weep? He says. The child's not dead. She's just sleeping. And the crowd laughs hysterically and sarcastically. But we see what happens. He takes her by the hand and says, Little girl, get up. The healing touch. There's something tremendously therapeutic in touch. After all, there's no better place for that to begin than here. There's no better place for those without hope to be touched than here. There's no better place from which we should start loving this broken world back to God who has loved us in Jesus with that touch of hope than here. What was it that bold woman said so many centuries ago? If I but touch, I will be healed. Amen.
Please rise as you're able as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. One in communion of saints and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we join our voices in prayer. God of abundance, you fill your church with a multitude of gifts. Sustain those among us who feel they are not valued. Open our hearts to the wondrous breath of all who call upon your name. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creation, your goodness abounds. Multiply the fruits of the earth and rescue it from our wastefulness. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of justice, you reign in steadfast love. Bring peace between nations ravaged by war or strife and illumine the paths of justice and freedom for those who lead them. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of compassion, your touch brings healing and your word revives us for life. Hear our prayers for Xavier, Randy, Stetson, Bob, Blaine, Rebecca, Charles, Fred, Sherry, Michael, Gail, May, Audrey, Nancy, Gary, Roger, Cheryl, Doug, Wayne, Todd, Rick, Wade, David, Brian, Bob, Nan, Jim, Donna, and Juliana, Pastor Sarah, and Pastor Hank, our River Raisin retired pastors, Rick Webb, Tim Lentner, Rich Rentner, Al Nelson, Emily Frank, Frank Payne, and Gary Leaking, the people of Ukraine and the Middle East, and all who are in need for doctors and nurses and healthcare workers who provide care. Turn wailing into dancing and weeping into joy. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of community, you gather us at your table of plenty. Where there is hunger among us, open our hands. When we are indifferent to the needs of others, open our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. God of the ages, great is your faithfulness. We remember in thanksgiving our beloved dead, all the saints who sing without ceasing in your realm of glory, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, holy and merciful, into your outstretched arm we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in the one who is the way, the truth, and the life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. We share a sign of the peace.
I'm not really trying. Thank you, Please rise. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. 
Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We feast on God's meal of love for us together. May be seated.
Congregation, please rise. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.